10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast, episode 316. Hey everybody, welcome back to episode 316 of the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast. It's the third week of the month, so you know what that means. We are going to do our lick of the month, and this month we're going to look at an awesome Phil Woods line over a blues. And just like last month, this lick comes from a YouTube video that I did of uh, reacting to Phil Woods' entire solo on YouTube. So go check that out. You can just search for Nick Manella on YouTube, and that should pop up as one of my latest videos. So we're going to take a deeper look at that. But if you want to check out the rest of the solo and hear some of my thoughts, you can always go and check out that video. So before we jump into the show, as usual, just want to remind you, this is a listener supported podcast, which means we do not have any advertisements on the show, except for this one. And instead, what we do is we ask our listeners for a small monthly donation. And in return for that, you do get a PDF and audio examples with every single episode. So if you'd like to check out how to support the show, become a member of the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson family. Go to our website, 10minutejazzlesson.com, click on one of the Patreon banners, and you can get yourself signed up today to be a supporter and get all those benefits that come along with it. Wanted to give a quick shout out to some new patrons this week. Thank you to our new $5 patrons, Ray and Brian. Thank you so much for signing up and to the over 350 people we have over there. Thank you so much for supporting the show. It really makes it possible to keep this thing going. So again, it's 10minutejazzlesson.com. Click on one of the Patreon banners. Get yourself signed up today for instant access to all 316 episodes that we have ever done. Okay, so let's jump into this week's episode. So we all know Phil Woods. We all know that name. We all know what an amazing musician he is. And I broke down his solo on the great Charlie Parker blues composition, Billy's Bounce. And this is my favorite part of the solo that we're gonna look at today. So it is an entire chorus because I wanted to go over the opening line. That's the real meat and potatoes of what's going on. That's what I wanna get into. But I wanted the rest of the chorus to put this line in context. Because not only is this little diminished line that we're gonna talk about, one of the coolest things I've heard in recent memory, but the way he frames that line with the way he plays the rest of the chorus is truly, truly amazing. So we're gonna look at the whole thing, and then what I did for the end of the episode was I, I took the idea that Phil Woods came up with, and I created my own line out of it. And I think this is what we should all be doing when we are learning vocabulary. It's not only about learning the vocabulary, it's taking the ideas from the vocabulary and turning it into something that is our own. So that's kind of the plan for today. So the first thing I want to do is check out this chorus uh, that Phil Woods plays. I want you to pay particular attention to the first four measures. That is the diminished line that I spoke of. And then we will chat about it. So here's the chorus. So you can hear the line that I really want to talk about is picking up into the top of the chorus. And what Phil Woods is doing here, if you grab your PDF and read along with me, is he's playing a series of diminished seventh chords that are a whole step apart, okay? So what he's doing is he's starting on a concert F diminished seventh chord, okay? And then he's going to move to concert G diminished then A, then B, then D flat, then E flat, and then F. So it's a really, really cool series of events. 
Listen to just that part of the chorus in context one more time. So the way that he's stacking those diminished chords, it really has a very striking sound to it. Now there's a couple of things that I want to talk about. So first of all, he's not really paying attention to the changes. I mean, he knows what these chords are going to sound like over the changes that are happening, but he's really just playing a pattern. He's playing diminished seventh chords, moving up by whole steps, and he's just such a genius and he's practiced so much and he has such good ears that he knows where to start it and where to come out of it in the perfect place. But really, if you look at the way that the notes interact, there's a lot going on. So that's that's your first job, is to look at how the notes of these diminished chords interact with the chords that are happening over them, okay? Now, the second thing I want you to notice is the way that he's put it together rhythmically, okay? He's playing a four note pattern, so he could have just started right on the downbeat, right? And everything would have lined up perfectly with beat one and three, the strong beats on the measure, but he didn't do that, okay? That's a little too basic for him. So what he did instead was he started on the and of three so that the pattern is staggered, right? The new diminished chord is always going to start on the and of one or the and of three. And this just takes an already cool line and just like puts it on steroids so that it's not just like your cookie cutter, I'm gonna play a four note pattern starting on one. Instead, he just moves it over by a half a beat and it becomes so, so, so interesting, okay? So those are the first things that I want you to think about. How do the notes interact with the chords and how can you take a basic four note exercise and just maybe displace it rhythmically? Those are the things that I took out of that initial line. So now what I want to talk about is the rest of the chorus and the way that he really frames this and the way that Phil Woods is always thinking on a bigger level, right? A more meta level. So I think you would agree that this line, this diminished line is very, very modern sounding. It's pretty out, right? So what he could have done was he could have kept going right? And, and taken it further and further and further outside and really solidified that sound in your ears of, okay, things are getting a little bit weird here. But he chose to go in the complete opposite direction. So if you look in measure four on beat three, so the way that he chooses to come out of this super, super crunchy line is to play the blues after it. So starting on beat three, measure four, you're going to notice that everything becomes a lot more simple in both rhythmic and harmonic aspects. So he's really using some very basic harmonic language. In fact, what he's doing is he's using that major pentatonic scale, but with the flat third most of the time. And then he switches things up towards the end, but he's staying basically inside of that scale for the rest of the chorus. The other thing that you will notice is that there's a ton of space in the rest of the chorus. So think about the juxtaposition here. He starts it off by packing in every single beat with notes, playing this very, very crunchy, very, very out diminished idea. And then he comes out of it in the simplest way possible, leaves a ton of space and makes you remember Oh yeah, he's just playing the blues. This juxtaposition is one of the true genius ideas that makes Phil Woods who he is. He doesn't always do what you think he's going to do, and he balances the sound in his playing between super traditional and super modern. And I just love that. That's a lesson that we can all really, really take to heart and try to incorporate in our own playing. It makes this single chorus of improvisation one of the most memorable things that I've heard in recent memory. Okay, so now that we've torn it apart, now we wanna put our own spin on this idea. So what I've done is I've tried to take the same idea, these stacked uh, diminished seventh chords starting on an offbeat, and I wanted to put it over the two, five, one in the blues starting in measure nine. 
So what I did was I kind of worked backward. I knew that I wanted to resolve over the concert F chord. I wanted to resolve to the third of that chord. And I wanted to do so a half step from above. So what I basically did was I worked my way backward, moving down on those diminished seventh chords by whole steps. And I came up with starting on a concert D flat diminished chord on the and of one in measure nine of the blues. And then I did exactly what Phil Woods did. So I started on the end of one, played the four note pattern, and of three, moved up a whole step, played the next diminished seventh chord, same thing in the next measure, and then eventually resolved it. So let's check out what that sounds like over the two five. All right, let's hear that lick one more time. So there's an example of how you could take the genius of Phil Woods and kind of suit it to your own purposes, right? Now, I could take the lick, and I probably will, and play it verbatim over the first four bars of the blues. Like, I definitely want that skill in my skill set. But I also kind of want to just understand what's going on with the lick and how to use it in different situations so that I have it accessible to me at all times. And that's what putting it in a different place and having to kind of think about it on a logical level, figure out how to put it all together does for you. So now I could probably use this sound not just in the way that Phil Woods did it, but in my own way. And I'm a big fan of doing that with any licks that you pull out of solos. Learn it verbatim, figure out how to do that side of things, and then try to flip it in your own way so that you both understand it on a deeper level and you have some flexibility with it. So I hope you enjoyed that lick. That is one of the coolest things I've heard in a long time, and I'm definitely going to be shedding that in my own practice time. If you have any questions, please get in touch. You can get in touch with me on the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Community Facebook group, or you can always email me at 10 Minute Jazz Lesson at gmail.com. Dot com. Remember to get signed up for Patreon so you can get that lick, both the original Phil Woods lick and the one that we wrote. That is 10minutejazzlesson.com. Click on one of the Patreon banners, get yourself signed up for instant access, and do go check out the Sax Player Reacts to Phil Woods video on YouTube. All right, everybody, as always, hope you're staying safe and healthy out there. My family is finally feeling back to 100% after our COVID encounter, and uh, I know it's going around pretty good out there. So stay safe. We love you all, and we'll see you next week with another episode. Have a good one, everybody. Bye.